This teaching is going to be on what is born again. What does it mean to be born again? The verses I'm going to give you at the beginning here are going to be verses of you when you don't have the Holy Spirit, when you don't have Jesus living inside your heart. The Bible says you're in the flesh. The flesh meaning your mere human nature. The earthly nature of a man apart from God's divine influence. That's what being in the flesh is. Bottom line, it pretty much means you're living the way you want to live. In John 6, 63, it says, Human efforts accomplish nothing. Now remember, these, the verses I'm going, to, I'm going to be reading you are verses from the Word of God. It's in the Bible. That's why I give you the verses so you can look it up yourself and read it. But in six, John 6:63, 6, it says it. Human efforts accomplish nothing. Human efforts. That means when you're doing it on your own. Romans 8:8. 8, 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When you're in the flesh, when you're living the way you want to live, you cannot please God. Romans 7:18. And I know that nothing good lives in me. Again, you're in the flesh. Nothing good. I don't care how moral you are. Nothing good is in you when you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart. In Titus 3, 5, it says, It don't matter how righteous you are. Unless you're born again, it's for nothing. Romans 7, 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. And mainly what it's just saying here, uh, the way you were living, your fruits was on to death. See, there's fruits of the Spirit, which brings you life. But then there's fruits here, which lead to death. And that's, that's the fruits that you produce when you're not living for the Lord. First John 2.16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. These things, these, these verses I just gave you, that's, this is how you are when you're not born again. You're not of the Father. You can't please God. Your fruits are unto death. You're heading nowhere. Oh, oh you, let me take that back. Yes, you are heading somewhere, but it's not where you want to go. Let's say it's not to heaven, okay? So these are the verses. Read them and see how you are if you're not born again. Another uh, saying in the Bible is the natural man. When you read natural man, it means sensual, which is referring to the body and the physical senses. Again, it's just another way of saying in the flesh, but sometimes it, the Bible says the natural man. 1 Corinthians 2.14 but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. And right here is saying, again, unless you have the Spirit in you, you can't understand the, way of, the ways of God. Even, even Christians can't understand the ways of God because the Lord says, My ways aren't your ways. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about, what, I can't have sex before marriage? Well, you know, some people don't see nothing wrong with that. But God said it's wrong. It's just sins like that it's, that we've taken in the world, I'm talking about, not Christians, but in the world they've made them like homosexuality. There's nothing wrong with that, according to the world. They can't understand that it's, it's, it's against God. Uh, abortion, the same thing. The, the world's trying to make it as it's, it's okay to have abortions, to kill babies. And this is what it's talking about. You can't understand uh, why God doesn't want this or why he does want something. You can't understand because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you to, to show you the ways of the Lord. In Jude eighteen nineteen, they told you that in the last times there would be scoffers. 
whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. And this is pretty much the world right here. It's uh, there are scoffers out there, uh, people who, who, who say there's not even a God, and then those, then there's those who agree there's a God, but, but they have a false teaching. They're they're what the Bible calls wolves. They they cause divisions in the churches because they they interp not that they interpret the scriptures wrong, but they. They make the scriptures mean something else. You know, the Bible is really very easy to read. But we as men have had made the scriptures difficult to understand. Because we say it means one thing and, and the word of God uh, says something else. And, and we cause confusion. Preachers do. Not all preachers, but wolves. I'm talking about wolves. Uh, I could give you an example like... Uh, if you walk with the Lord, if if you're a Christian, then you can become a god. Well, that's that's not biblical, and you have men out there that are teaching that. That's not biblical. It, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we can become like God. Also, but these are these are things that are being taught that are that are against God's uh, God against God's word, and we need to read the Bible and quit putting our trust in men. Because the Bible plainly says it, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in a man. So when you do have a teacher or a preacher that you're listening to, make sure he's he's what he's telling you is from the Word of God. Make sure he's giving you things with the Scriptures, and then you need to check them out. Make sure he didn't take those verses out of context, which many many do. So don't put your confidence in the man that he can't be wrong on what he's teaching. Just like with me. That's why I give you these scriptures. So you can read them for yourself and see if this is from the Lord or not. James 3.15 For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. This, these are ways we walk when we don't have the Lord jealousies and selfishness uh, selfishness is like you want to be at the top no matter what it takes you want to be at the top and of course we want to be where God wants us to be sometimes he don't put us at the top because he wants us in the middle of a job or at the bottom of a job but he has us there for a reason it's not always God uh, God's will to put all Christians at the top Hope you understand what I'm saying. But people who are in the world, in the flesh, uh, they have one motive, and that's to make it to the top. Uh, and it causes jealousy. People who are at the top, they're jealous. And the Lord says, this is not God's wisdom. Such things like this is unspiritual and demonic, he says. Now, there's other places in the Bible that mean the same thing as flesh, natural man, Sometimes it says the old man or the outward man. Again, when you read when you read these words, it's meaning the same thing as the flesh. Ephesians 4:22 Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. He says to take it off, take off your old life. That's that's why in uh, the book of Corinthians chapter 5 it talks about how we become new creatures because we throw off the old sinful nature you know we're all born into sin we all have a sinful nature all of us Jesus was the only one who was born without a sinful nature because his father was God he was born of a woman but he wasn't born by two sinners you two sinners have a baby you have a sinner but Jesus wasn't born by two sinners. He was born by a virgin and by God. So he didn't have that sinful nature that we have. The word corrupt means your former life was corrupt and unclean. You lived in the pursuit of pleasures and happiness. You sought this in gratification of the lust of the flesh. And you were, and you were deceived by these lusts. 
and disappointments in your expectations because people, like I said, they uh, they have no mercy. Whatever it takes, they will do to get to the top. There is no no mercy there. They will do what they have to do. And this, there's no way that this person can have a pleasurable life, a happy life. Not when he's always trying to walk on other people to get ahead. There's no true pleasures or happiness without Christ. The Bible also, also talks about the heart, which is the most inner part of our, our nature, our, our, our soul, is our heart. And the Bible speaks about the heart. Where the heart is when you don't have the Lord there. In Jeremiah 17, 9, the human heart is most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? This is the Lord saying these words. This is not Jesse. This is the word of God. It says the heart is, is all these things. It's desperately wicked. When you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, your heart is bad. It's bad. The word of God says it. In Proverbs 28, 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. And what is walking wisely? Walking for the Lord. That's what it's talking about here. That's when you're walking wisely. It's when, you, when you're walking with the Lord, when you put the Lord Jesus in your heart. But he says, uh, before you do that, what does he say here? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. A lot of people have their opinion and I'm gonna say opinion because that's all it is they have opinions on how they're gonna make it to heaven well I think I'm gonna go to heaven because blah 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 well why are you giving an opinion the Bible plainly says how you make it to heaven it says who can know who can know the heart a corrupt heart is is the worst enemy a man can have it is it is full of evil it's deceitful and you don't know really what is there until it boils over the lo the loss of a temper or uh, something like you really don't know where your heart is until it's till it comes to a point where someone has made you so angry you could even kill which you wouldn't which you would think oh you could never do that but someone can cause your heart to to uh to its deepest temptation of of bad therefore don't trust in your heart, which is continually changing by motives and self-interest. It's always changing. But one thing for sure, it's deceitful. You cannot trust in your own heart when it's not filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthews 15, 19. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immortalities, death, lying and slander this is what comes this is the word of God he is saying this is what is in your heart and you might be thinking I'm not all this uh, yes you are it's by the grace of God that Christians born again Christians don't live this way because he's filled us with the Holy Spirit but if we weren't Christians even I if I was not a born again Christian I would have all this in my heart even up to murder I have two daughters, and if they were ever, like, raped, I could probably come pretty close to killing whoever did it. So that's what I'm saying. You don't know where your heart is until it's tempted or tested. Psalms 58.2 Do you plot injustice in your hearts? Do you spread violence throughout the land? And there's many people like this. There's many people like this. They plot injustice in their hearts. Uh, just like those people on 9 -1 This is what it's talking about. You spread violence throughout the land because of what you believe. It's not because of what the Word of God says. It's what This is what they believe. They're doing right. But it's not of the Lord. Genesis 6, 5. The Lord observed the extent of of human wickedness on the earth and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistent cons consistently and totally evil 
what the Lord is saying here is, is the world, the earth, is just continually evil. It's always going to be evil. It's it's it, until until the Lord comes and he and uh, he does away with this earth and he will. I have a tape called The Last Days if you want to know about that. But yes, this earth will come to an end. But until then, this earth will be evil continually. There's not going to be no big revival in the land where everybody's getting saved and everybody's going to give their life to the Lord. If you're living right now in this world, you can see that we're getting further and further away from the Lord. We're taking the the, the, the Ten Commandments out of this and taking it out of that. And God we trust, we want to take it off the uh, coins, the money. Uh, they're just doing everything they can just to totally get away from the Lord. So it's not going to get any better. It's just going to get worse. You can see it. It's happening now. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Which in your heart, that's the way you are. And if you don't have Jesus Christ there, it's bad. I've read all these verses to you. It's not good. It's not good. And there's other places in the Bible where it says the cardinal mind. Again, talking about being in the flesh. The cardinal mind is uh, is governed by the, our human nature. It's not by the Spirit of God. In Matthew 12, 34, o genera Jesus is saying, O generations of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. O generations of vipers. That's what the Lord, he's speaking to religious leaders. O generations of vipers, how can you, being evil, they were being evil because they weren't people. They weren't pointing to the Lord. They were pretty much just taking. They were pointing to themselves. When Jesus came on earth, the religious leaders—they're the ones who wanted him crucified. Because they knew if people saw him as the Messiah, the Christ, then it would have taken power away from them, and the people wouldn't be following them. And they knew this. That's why they had to get rid of Jesus. That's why they had to nail him to the cross. But it's saying here, people like that, how can they speak good things? How can they? When it's just only evil in their hearts. Romans chapter 7 verses 18 all the way to chapter 8 verse 2 or verse 1 I mean. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do, excuse me, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what is what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing it. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's laws with my whole heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind I really want to obey God's laws, but because of my sinful nature I am a slave to sin. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So these verses right here are plainly saying, you know, there's, there's people, they want to do what's right. They want to. It's even in their heart. But sin just keeps knocking them down, doesn't it? Uh, the the demons, their own sinful nature, it just keeps knocking them down and saying, no, don't go that way. Even though this person wants to, but they can't. And what does it say right here? Verse 25. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in your heart can defeat the devil. Jesus Christ in your heart can help you overcome temptations of sin. 
This is what we need is Jesus Christ to help us with the weaknesses that we have. We want to do what's right, but we do what's wrong instead. That's what the scriptures are saying. And the only way you can beat that is to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. And he will give you the strength to overcome. This is what these verses are saying. So then when you do that, the last verse there, chapter 8, verse 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. What it's saying here now, there is no judgment on us. As soon as you get born again, God sees you just, he sees you right with him. Our judgment comes as soon as we accept him as Lord. He has judged us to be right with him. Another thing I want to point out when we don't have Jesus Christ in our heart is Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. All of us. All the preachers, all the priests, every one of us have come, have sinned. And we've come short to the glory of God until we accept Jesus. Until we accept Jesus. But until then, we all come short of the glory of God. That's being with Him. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death. So in, as long as you have, you know, we are in sin. We are dead. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if we don't make Jesus Christ Lord of our life, then the wages of our sin is death. This is what the verse is saying. The wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. In John 11.25 Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live ever after dying. I mean, even after dying. Sorry. So the Lord is saying right here, he was talking to a woman, and he said that uh, he is the resurrection and he is the life. Remember, we're dead without, without the Lord. We're dead. And he's saying here that he is the life. And whoever believes in him will live. Even after he, after we die, we're, we're talking about a physical death here on earth. That's what he's talking about. Even after we die here on earth, we're, we're going to live with him forever. Ephesians 2, 1. And you hath he quickened, which meaning made alive, who were dead. We were dead. Who were dead in trespasses and sin. So you see, we were dead. We are dead until we accept Jesus Christ. He will quicken us. He will make us alive. hope you understand the scriptures here. Ephesians 2, 5. That even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It was only God's grace that you have been saved. It is only by His grace that we have been, we have been saved because He sent His Son Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross for us and because of his death his his death on the cross now we were we were made to have life through him to have life through him Matthew 25:46 and these shall go away into everlasting punishment and it's, if you read the verses above it it's talking about people who are who don't have Jesus in their heart who don't live for the Lord it says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. That means this punishment is forever. It does not die. It will not end. But he says, but the righteous, and the righteous are those who have been born again, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, but the righteous into life eternal. So we're going to, those who, who don't want to make Jesus Christ Lord of their life, they're going to live forever in punishment. But those of us who do accept Jesus Christ, we're going to live forever also with Him. So everybody's going to live forever. It's either going to be in hell, in the everlasting punishment, or it's going to be with in, in heaven with the Lord. Now who needs to be born again? 
what people need to be born again. I'm going to read, I'm going to start with John, chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 16. But we're going to study the verses as I read them. In verse 1, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Nic Nicodemus, in his religion, he was equal to like a cardinal in today's religion. In the Bible, there are three religions in the Jewish nation, which was Pharisees, scribes, and Sassages. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, which, which was the most religious. They lived by the Word of God, the Old Testament, the Old Testament, because the New Testament hadn't been written yet. But they lived by the Word of God, the Old Testament. That's what they lived by. So they were very religious people, and this this man, Nicodemus, who was a religious man, a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus. You know, uh, they, they started to have great sin, and in between the Old Testament, when the Old Testament was completed until the New Testament started, which was about 400 years, that's when the Lord was quiet. God wasn't uh, uh, moving... Uh, Jesus hadn't got here yet. So for 400 years there, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, there, there was just great sin. And during that time, Jews started making their own laws and rules. You know, like today. You got religions today who make up their own laws and their own rules. Uh, I won't go into detail about that, but uh, read the scriptures, read God's words. That way you can recognize them. Read God's words. And you'll be able to recognize those religions that make up their own rules. Taking the scriptures and just uh, taking them out of context and just making them mean what, what benefits them. What helps their tradition in that religion. They do it today. Just as they did it back then. Verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus, this religious leader, he came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Now in verse 2, you would think Jesus would be pleased with Nicodemus because he called him teacher, a teacher from God. But he was not pleased with that. Because Nicodemus hadn't recognized him as Lord. He recognized him as being a teacher, but not Lord. Just like Peter in Matthew's chapter 17, verses 4 and 5, Peter put Jesus in the same boat with Moses and Elijah. And God says, no, no, no. You listen to my son. He is the one. He is the one that you listen to. Don't put Jesus, don't put Moses and Elijah, Elijah in the same boat with Jesus. They were great men of God, yes. But Jesus is not a great man of God. And I have a, a teaching on uh, Jesus being God. And many people do believe that. They believe in the Trinity, but there's some people who don't believe in the Trinity. But I do have a teaching that shows that Jesus is God. So do not put Jesus equal to man, because he's not. So Jesus saw that Nicodemus wasn't there yet. He was a religious leader, but he just wasn't there yet. He wasn't born again. And Jesus told him, you're not even going to see the kingdom of God. He's talking to a religious leader. In Ephesians 2, 1, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your sins. You know, we only die once. And we all died in the garden when Adam and Eve took of the fruit. Because God told them in the garden, he said, don't eat of the fruit. Because the day you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. Well, they ate of the fruit. But did they die? Yes, spiritually, but not physically. Because they are the ones who, who populated the earth. So they didn't die physically, but they did die spiritually. And that's what it's talking about. 
and he's telling Nicodemus this. Nicodemus was a, was like a slave to his his religion, because uh, even though he wanted to know the truth and, and he went to Jesus, he couldn't do that in front of his religious leaders, his his brothers in the religion, because like I said before, they didn't want to recognize Jesus as being the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. Now verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That is that which is born in the flesh, talking about of the water. The verse right above it where it says born of the water, that's talking about the woman's uh, water sack. That's why in verse 6 it says that which is born of the flesh, meaning in the water, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So first you're born in the water, your, your mother's water sack, but then you're born again in the spirit. Jesus was telling Nicodemus he was lost. So if that was true then, don't you think it would be true today that there's preachers or priests in high places that are lost? Now I've done tell you that the Bible speaks about there's wolves. There's wolves out there. They look like preachers. They sound like preachers. They act like preachers. But inside, they're wolves. And they're leading us astray. So just like Nicodemus, like I said, he was like a cardinal compared to today's religion. And he was a, he was, he was a religious leader. And he didn't know the truth. Jesus had to tell him he had to be born again. In John 1, verses 12 and 13, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He's saying you're born of God. That's when you're born again. You're born of God. He said not, not of blood, meaning man, or nor of the will of the flesh, meaning man. Okay? but of the Spirit of God. You're born again in the Spirit of God. That's your second. That's born, being born again. The first time we were born, we were born as a human. Okay? And we had to learn how to walk and talk as a human. But then when you're born of the, in the Spirit, born of God, born again, we learn again how to walk and talk. Because we've become new creatures. We got. We have to learn a new way of walking and talking now. 